I sometimes wonder whether in 5 to 10 years we'll still be having a high street. I mean, will we still go shopping like we do today or will we be putting on our virtual reality goggles and get our products delivered by drone into our living room? I had a chat with Kate Trotter about this. Kate's the head of trends at Insider Trends in London and she focuses on getting retailers to prepare for a future that's both uncertain and exciting. Hi there, I'm Kate Trotter. I'm the Head of Trends at Insider Trends and everything my business does focuses on the future of retail. So in terms of how experiences are going to be different for customers, I think they're going to split. I think they're going to split either into being faster, more efficient types of experiences or being slower and richer types of experience. But I think mainly Offline experiences will lend themselves really well to slow, rich experiences that help customers learn what the brand is about and almost start behaving like leisure experiences, actually. And then when a customer understands what the brand is about, they've built trust or they've learned to trust that brand, they can then buy from the brand in really efficient ways, perhaps through online channels, they set up a repeat subscription order that's super fast and effortless. So I think brands are going to have to learn to balance those types of experience. And I think always customer expectations are changed and elevated by them having a new good experience in one part of their lives that they then bring to every other part of their lives. So if you think about the fact that when you go in an Uber cab, when you leave, you don't actually have to pay the driver directly, all the payments done automatically. And so I think that starts to make customers question why they need to queue to pay in retail stores. Um, or yeah, the fact that, I don't know, you can go to a punch drunk theater show and have this amazing, immersive, interactive experience you start to question why you need to have really dry, boring experiences elsewhere in your life. Or the fact that you can Google an item and f compare different options and prices online. The fact that the real world isn't searchable in that way today kind of seems crazy now, actually. So yes, good experiences from all over our lives are transforming expectations elsewhere. I don't think the high street is going to go away, but I do think it's going to change, mainly because the function of physical space is changing. I think it's changing in two ways. It's either becoming a more engaging space to offer these slow experiences that almost rival leisure experiences in a way. So you might find in 2025 you have the option of taking your family to a theme park or taking them onto the high street to shop and to have all these amazing experiences. So that's one type of use for physical space, but the other is perhaps simpler where it acts as a service point. So it, might, it may well still be a place to collect your online orders or a place where you can go and get your body scanned to have your latest suit or set of clothing made or you can go and talk to a personal stylist or a beauty technician to work out what the perfect products for you are. And then once you've worked that out, you can then order or, or set up a recurring order really simply through the online, online channels. There are some interesting changes happening related to brands and retail. For years, retailers have been acting in part like media companies. So they've been running their own social media channels, pushing content through that, creating their own store magazines, for instance. But that means that media companies need to find a way to make money because that space is becoming more complicated. So there's a series of media companies that are now setting up retail operations, both online and offline.
So we're also noticing that there's a series of manufacturers who are now starting their own direct-to-consumer retail operations because that means they can control the experience more, so they get more traffic, but so they get more sales and each time they sell more they get to keep more of the money because there's fewer people to share the profits with. At the same time, retailers can now become manufacturers because there's all this on-demand technology that means that retailers can make things in stores. So actually the definition of a retailer's competition is completely changing. I would recommend that brands take as much action as they can. I think brands are used to looking at what their competitors are doing and what works for their competitors and then copying that. But actually, instead of looking to their competitors' successes, brands need to start learning from their own mistakes and learning that failure isn't that scary. If you control your risk, then it's fine to fail. Failure means learning. I know this is what Amazon have been talking about for years, but I think it's time that brands start doing this en masse. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it and you want to see more, use the little red button below to subscribe to this channel. Alternatively, come over to alanteis.com where you can find articles, ideas and all sorts of best practices in the area of customer experience management. There's also a bi-weekly newsletter where I bring together all the thoughts I can find and lots more of these little videos and thoughts. Finally, if you want to get a hold of Kate Trotter, her contact details are in the show notes. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.